All right, everyone, so now that we have our charting done and we have all of our data sets um, created, we're gonna go ahead and start building our Shiny dashboard. So before we get started though, let's clear out our global environment and let's clear out our workspace. So let's restart our session. Um, and let's start by creating two new R scripts. So this first one, let's save it and call it server. And then the second one, let's save it and call it UI. And so let's go to our server file and let's import our libraries. So we'll start with library ggplot2, library dplyr, library tidyr, even though I don't think we use that here. Um, and then we'll also bring in library, um, th these are gonna be two new packages, so shiny. This is the package that's gonna be used to develop our dashboard. And then since the Shiny dashboards as a default are pretty unattractive user interfaces, we're gonna bring in Shiny dashboard, which is um, a function that works with the Shiny package, but it'll help us build a, a more attractive user interface. So, and again, if you don't have these, um, the function is install.packages, and then it quotes either Shiny or Shiny dashboard. Um, so I'm not going to run this because I already have these packages installed. But if you don't, that is the function for them. And so the first thing we're going to do is um, let's actually go back over to our charting file and let's copy out the working directory. So we will set the working directory so R knows that we are back in our stock analyzer folder. Um, and then let's go ahead and load in some data. So let's load in the returns long. Let's load in perform performance summary. And let's load in the S&P 500 data set. And so now that we have our data in and all of our packages um, loaded, Let's just go ahead and create a very simple dashboard. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function called server, and it's gonna have the arguments input and output. And after that, we're gonna use our curly braces. Um, let's send this to our global environment. And then we are going to create a UI variable, and we're gonna use the shiny dashboard package to do that. And so to do that, we're gonna say dashboard page and then within dashboard page we are going to do dashboard header comma dashboard sidebar comma and dashboard body and so let's execute this code um, let's save our UI let's save our server and then let's go back over to our server file and underneath the server function we're going to type shiny app and in parens UI server. So that's shiny app, lowercase s, uppercase a. And then our first argument is our UI variable that is on our UI script. And then the second argument is this server function. So let's execute this. And now you can see we have our very first shiny dashboard. It's very basic. Um, it has our header in blue up here. Our body is this large area in white, and then our sidebar is this sort of grayish panel on the side here. And we also have this hamburger menu that if we click it, it's gonna collapse this sidebar. Um, so now let's go ahead and start filling out our dashboard. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is go back over to charting, and we're gonna scroll down to where we created our price chart. And let's copy the price chart, the industry chart, and the performance chart. We're going to copy these over to the server file and paste it right in the middle of this server function. And so now let's go up to our price chart. And what we need to do is, the, w the way this is going to work is the server functions and this server, the, so this server script along, along with this server function basically are going to calculate all of the data and then that's, they're going to send this data over to our user interface where it's going to display 
right? And then the user interface is going to have some user inputs that will then send that data. So we're, we're going to have we're going to have an input where you can select what stock timber ticker you want to show, and then that's going to send these. So the user interface is going to have an input for the stock ticker. It's going to send the stock ticker back to the server. The server is going to read in the ticker, right? It's going to update all of the charts, and then it's going to send those updated charts back to the user interface. And so that's how these two files, there's kind of a push and pull back and forth between the two, but that's how they work. They work in tandem. Um, so the first thing um, we need to do is we need to make sure that the server file is set up to send these charts over to the user interface. And so the way we do that is we need to create output objects for each one of these charts. So the first output object is going to be for the price chart. And to do that, we're going to say output dollar sign price chart. And then that's going to equal render plot. Okay, and then we're going to do an open and close paren. And then inside the open and close paren, we're going to do an open and close bracket. And then we're going to copy the ending bracket and paren. We're actually going to cut that and then we're going to put it underneath the price chart. And then let's highlight everything inside the render plot function. Let's give that a tab so that this is a little bit more readable. So, what this is doing is this is creating a function. So, render plot is a function that is going to generate our plot and then it's going to put it into an output object called price. Right, so then what's going to happen is within our user interface, we're going to make a call to this output object within the body of the dashboard. And so let's go ahead and create the output objects for the other charts, and then I'll show you what that looks like on the user interface side. So let's copy this out, and let's paste it in for the industry chart. So let's replace price with industry. Um, and let's copy the closing paren and bracket for the price chart and put that at the bottom of the industry chart. And then let's highlight the contents of our industry chart. And let's give that one tab over, again, to make it more readable. And let's do this one more time. So we're going to copy the output. And then we're going to paste it for the performance chart. And then we're going to paste the closing bracket and closing paren and we're going to paste it under the performance chart. And so let's highlight once more the content of the performance chart and let's tab it over one. And we also need to rename our performance chart output. So performance. So now we have output dollar sign performance chart. Um, and also, so one of the things you'll notice is, right, so all of these charts right now are working off of um, a ticker variable. So remember we hard-coded in the charting function this ticker variable. Let's just copy that over to our server function for now just so that this doesn't fail on us. So let's paste that above our server function and let's send this to the console. So now we have a ticker within our global environment. Um, so what we're going to do eventually is we're going to replace this ticker with some input from the user interface so that um, the data loads dynamically based off of the user selection. But for now, um, let's go back over to the user interface and let's start filling this out and showing some of these plots. So in the header, let's do title equals stock analyzer. And then within the body, let's start generating these plots. So first, we need to determine our layout. And the way we're going to use that is we're going to use fluid rows, columns, and boxes. So all of these are functions that are part of the Shiny Dashboard package. Um, and I'm going to walk you through those right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a fluid row. And within this fluid row, we're going to create a column. And in this column, we are going to use the argument with equals 12. Then we're going to do a comma box 
and inside the box we're going to do plot output price chart okay so what this is doing is within the body right because since we're in the dashboard body within the body we're creating a row so we're, cre we're creating a row across the top and in that row we're creating a column and the width of the column is 12. So within the fluid row, the max width of the column is 12. So we're really creating one row with one column. So it's going to take up the whole top part of our dashboard here. And then we're putting in this um, row, this row and column, we're putting in our price chart. So now let's create another row underneath the price chart which is going to have two columns, right? So we're going to have one chart on top, and then we're going to have two charts below the price chart. And to do that, we're going to create another fluid row. We're going to create a column. And then we're going to do a comma, and we're going to create another column. So within the first column, we're going to say width equals eight, box, And then we're going to say plot, output, and we're going to say industry chart. And so now in our other column, we are going to say width equals 4, box, plot, output, and we are going to use our performance chart. Okay, so we have one row up here with one column, and that column is going to be 12 in width, which is the whole, which is basically 100% of the row. And that's going to have our charting or our price chart. And then below this row, we're going to have another row with two columns. Okay, so one with a width of 8 and one with a width of 4, right? So that adds up to 12, our 100%. And the first, um, the first box is going to have an industry chart. And then the second box is going to have our price chart or our performance chart. And so let's go ahead and save the user interface. Let's rerun this um, statement. So let's send our user interface back to the global environment with our updated rows. Let's go back to the server. Let's just save this and let's just re execute this server function just to make sure we have the updated version loaded. And then let's try running our app. Oh, it's being a little funny right now. It's being very funny right now. Um, so one of the things I'm wondering is if within the box, I'm wondering if I need to do a width argument equals 100%. And then let's put a comma after that. So above our plot output, let's make this 100%. And let's do that for all of our boxes. Let's save this and let's try that again. So let's send our UI to the console. And then let's try to rerun our app. OK, so that was the trick. So now we have, right, so we have our first row. We have our first fluid row with one column. It's 12 in width, and it's holding our price chart. And you can see we have Amazon, and we have our ticker, and our um, industry. And then we have our industry returns, so we can see that over one year, right, the um, internet and direct marketing retail industry, and we, we can see how that performed. And then we can see how Amazon performed over these different time periods, right? So, but now what we need to add is we need to add a way to change our stock from Amazon 
to any of the other stocks within the S&P 500. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an input box right up here. It's going to be a drop down. You're going to be able to just select what stock you want, and then all of these charts are going to update. So let's close out of this. And let's go back to our user interface. And what we are going to do is within the sidebar, so within this dashboard sidebar, we are going to create a um, input. So it's going to be select input. And inside of this, we are going to write ticker select. So that's going to be the name. So the, this first argument is the, the ID of the select box that we're about to create. And it's going to allow us to reference this select box on the server side. So the next argument is going to be what we want to display on this text box on the user interface. And I'm just going to call it ticker. And then the third argument is going to be what is actually within the dropdown itself. And so we want the S&P 500 tickers, right? And so now if we save this, let's send the UI to the console. Let's go back over to server. And now, so before we were, we had this dummy ticker for Amazon. So let's get rid of that. And where we had ticker, we're going to replace that with input dollar sign ticker select. And so let's copy this. And wherever we had that ticker, right? So we had it in the name of this plot, the pricing plot. So let's replace it there. Um, we're we're going to replace the input ticker select, right? So wherever we had ticker, we're going to replace this. So, okay, so we have it twice in the industry chart. And it looks like we have it once in the performance chart. So let's save this. Let's re-execute our server. And then let's run our Shiny app. OK, so now we have our ticker select input box right here. The first one in the list is triple M. So you can see that that's currently loaded. And now if we select, let's actually, you know, let's actually delete this and type MSFT for Microsoft. So if we select Microsoft, now this dynamically loads all of the information for Microsoft. So we have the Microsoft price chart, right, for the last 10 years. We have the industry returns of the information technology sector. And we have the performance of Microsoft over the one month, one quarter, one year, and so on time periods. And so that is um, that. That is it for this tutorial. So that is our dashboard. Um, pretty cool. There's a lot more stuff you can do with this data, um, and I, I will let you guys try and figure that out and experiment with this. But I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you did, make sure to subscribe or leave a comment. And thanks for watching.